call the meeting to order. I have a statement to read. Good evening. This is the regularly scheduled April 13th meeting of the Geneva Planning and Zoning Commission. I am John Mead, Vice Chairman of the Commission, filling in for Chairman Scott Stocking. Tonight, for the benefit of those in attendance, I'm joined by Commissioner Rebecca Holloman, Commissioner Mike Slifka, Commissioner Adam Mattiskill, Commissioner Mim Evans, Community Development Director David DeGroote, and City Planner Matt Busing. Virtual attendees may watch or participate in the live streamed meeting by accessing the link provided on the meeting agenda found on the city's website at www.geneva.il.us. For more information about meeting procedures or providing public comment, please see notice regarding meeting and public comment rule modification. This evening, the commission will host a public hearing for agenda item 5A, followed by a site plan review for agenda item 6A, as chairman of tonight's meeting, I will guide the public, applicant, and the commission through our public hearing process, which is outlined on the back of the meeting agenda. Please see this page for further details. Agenda item 5A pertains to a variant request for the property located at 101 Woodlawn Street. The commission will open the public hearing and the applicant will provide an opening statement and brief overview of their requests. Commission members will first have the opportunity to ask questions and make comments. This will be followed by public comment and testimony regarding the requests. Audience members will be called on virtually or in person and given an opportunity to comment. We ask that you state your name and address when it is your turn to speak. If your comment has already been made or your question has already been asked, it is not necessary to repeat it. We remind members of the public to refrain, refrain from veering off topic and direct comments that are germane to the requests being considered. Ad agenda item 6A pertains to the site plan review for the General Mills expansion project. As a friendly reminder, reminder, this agenda item does not require a public hearing. However, members of the public wishing to make comments or ask questions regarding this item may do so during the public comment portion of the meeting at agenda item 7. In order to help with the quality of the meeting broadcast, I would remind all commissioners to mute themselves except when they are addressing the commission. Commissioners are also encouraged to state their name prior to speaking and prior to providing a roll call vote to better assist our record keepers. For example, Mead, I, nay, or abstain. Kristen, would you call the roll? Evans? Meet here. We have a quorum so we can proceed. The next item on the agenda is item three, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion or discussion? Move to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Next item is item four. First is the approval of the minutes for the September 22nd, 2002 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. 2022. 2022. Did I say 20? 2002. 2022. Do you have a motion for approval or comment? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Next item is item 4B, approval of the minutes for the October 27th, 2022 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Do I have a motion for approval or discussion? All those in favor? Any, any opposed? None. That also passes. Now we move on to the public hearing portion of our meeting. Um, is there, do, do the swearing. Do we have that? It's up back here, right? Okay. All right. I just have to read this. Basically, okay. If prior to the public hearing um, and swearing in, I'll read the instructions for the, and the procedures for public hearings. 
is the Planning and Zoning Commission's job to conduct public hearings, either in person or virtually, in order to receive testimony for or and against petitions for general amendments in, to the zoning ordinance, zoning map amendments, zoning text amendments, special use permits and variations. Individuals participating within the public hearing will need to register for and access the meeting via the links provided in previously distributed public hearing and meeting notices. The procedure followed for virtual public hearings is as follows. First, the Planning and Zoning Commission Secretary or the designated representative will read and describe the items, the written items, reports, and plans into the record. Second, the petitioner will present testimony in favor of the petition and will present any supporting plans or exhibits. Third, the commission members will have an opportunity to question the petitioner. Fourth, the commission will then receive citizen testimony both for and against the petition. Questions about the proposal may be directed to the petitioner or petitioner's witnesses, and the questions about the Planning and Zoning Commission process itself may be directed to me, the chairman, the acting chairman. Following the testimony, the petitioner and the Planning and Zoning Commission may ask questions of those who testified. Finally, the petitioner may provide a rebuttal to any testimony in opposition. When all the testimony is brought into the record, the hearing will be closed and the Planning and Zoning Commission will make a recommendation to the City Council in the form of a motion or motions. In order to give virtual testimony, participants will be asked to utilize the meeting's platform's hands raising feature to speak. When a hand is raised by a participant, City staff will unmute the participant, allowing them to speak. It is also important for the participants to remember to unmute themselves. Video sharing abilities will not be provided to participants unless requested. Participants speaking during the public hearing agree and understand that anything they say will be considered sworn testimony and affirmed to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Participants giving testimony will need to re remember to speak directly into the microphone to be heard. Participants must first begin their testimony by stating their name and address. If participants speak additional times, they will need to state their name each time for the record. It is asked that the pres presented testimony remain concise. If a point has already been made, it will not be necessary to repeat it. Each of these points is recorded and will be considered as the commission develops findings of fact and a recommendation or recommendations. Participants may provide testimony in written form, but shall uh, but such written testimony must be presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission Secretary or the designated representative prior to the closing of the hearing. After the process is completed and everyone wishing to present testimony has spoken, the commission will then decide whether it is, has heard testimony adequate in order to make a decision. If it has, the public hearing will be closed. After a public hearing is closed, the Planning and Zoning Commission will refrain from receiving any additional testimony, either for or against the petition. There is one exception to this rule. City staff will submit a report based on the testimony presented at the hearing. The report will consider comments or concerns from all city departments, such as the fire department, public works department, or the engineering department. Thank you for bearing with me on that. At this time, prior to any, in, entering into the public hearing, I think we need to swear uh, folks in. Anybody that's going to give testimony tonight or who has signed the, the sheet of paper coming in that wishes to speak tonight, if you'd all stand. Was there a sheet of paper out? Uh, there should be a sheet out there. But yeah. It was when you were coming in. You can sign that on the way out if you just, if you just want to raise your right hand. So anybody that will be speaking, if you'd stand and raise your right hand, if you'd stand. Do you solemnly swear that any testimony you give tonight is, will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay, the pu first public, the first, uh, the public hearing is for 101 Woodland Deck Variation, request from a ver for a variation from Section 11-3-3 of the Gene Geneva Zoning Ordinance to allow a deck in a street yard and a variation from Section 11-5E-4 to permit a street yard setback of 17 feet instead of the required 20 feet for the proposed deck. The property is located at 101 Woodland Street, and the applicant is Alan Drews of Old Town Custom Builders, Inc. Uh, David, do you have any, or Matt, do you have anything to read into the record? Yes. Do I have to do this? There we go. All right. So the contents of this file Oops. include an I? application. 
I didn't do anything wrong. Okay. okay. The contents of this file include an application for a variation filed by Ellen Drews, dated January 11, 2023, including the following items project narrative, response to variation standards, the legal description, plat of survey, deck details, supporting photos, the list of property owners within 500 feet of the subject property, an affidavit attesting to the accuracy of the list of property owners within 500 feet of the subject property. The file also includes a copy of the letter to all property owner owners within 500 feet providing notice of the application being filed a certificate of publication from the Daily Herald for the legal notice that was published on March 29, 2023 for tonight's public hearing, a copy of the public hearing notice mailed to all property owners within 500 feet, and a staff report from the Community Development Department to the Planning and Zoning Commission dated April 13, 2023. Okay, now we would hear from the applicant. Thank you. My name is Alan Drews, 5N765 Crane Road, St. Charles, Illinois, 60175. I am the owner of Old Town Custom Built Builders out of St. Charles. Our applicant today, our, our people are here, <coughs> the Tippins. So you can see what we are asking for is the variation to put back what was there at one time originally, and that is the front, we're calling it a front porch. Front porch did not have a cover over it and defined in the section um, of what a front porch is. There's no way of putting a cover over it and there never was a cover over it, which is in the pictures that you have. Trying to put a deck anywhere else on this uh, property would also require a variance if it's on a side yard, which doesn't make sense because there's no direct access to it. The backyard, there is no access because there is a garage right there. Putting back this deck with the continued uh, design that is there now, which is from the previous owner, would allow the Tippins to be able to walk right out of their home and be able to enjoy outside without being able to only have to walk down the stairs and go into the yard. Um, as you can see, uh, my people are, are capable of going beyond that, but to enjoy one space at home, this makes sense just to extend this back to where it was, but since zoning has changed for side setbacks, we are not going past the setback of the hops. This, on the side yard, it stays the same. Nothing changes. We will actually be within inches of the corner of, the, uh, of that house. We are not coming out any further than the existing, uh, which doesn't even go past what was previously there. This will make the house also attractive and it will also help the Tippins in resale and it will help the values here of Geneva. That is my testimony if there's any questions. Thank you. Any, any of the commissioners? No, what was there pre previous was a cinder block foundation going around. This is going to be your framed uh, deck like you would normally see. It's elevated to meet the uh, existing elevation for the front entrance. So with, with a railing around it, with essentially, a rail, yes, uh, not an opaque uh, uh, no, wall, No, the, the railing is the existing that's on there right now. It, it's, it's a continuation of exact materials and type that's there now. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? The uh, the pictures that you had in the package that are all those of the subject home. I think that yes. Okay, because it so ones that before and ones and after. Some are older and okay. then newer. The older is to demonstrate that there was a full front right. porch there at that time or at a time. Right. Okay. And I had, um, one, one thing I noted, I drove 
passed about dusk last night, and um, the six foot protrusion into the to the to the woodlawn draw, uh, yard still is not as far out as the house immediately to the north of it. They have a, a, a covered porch that, that sticks out farther than this than this uh, deck will. So when you, from the street. So. Right. Yeah. It will not protrude past the house. Does not protrude past going to the side yard. To the front yard, it goes to the existing decking. That's Correct. There. Which, which I think is still inside. Yes. Of what the adjacent house's front porch sticks out towards wood. Right. Is what that's what struck me looking at it from different angles. So. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, didn't work before. So this request um, is to allow a deck in a street yard, and I know that your plans indicate that it will be the same design as the existing front porch, which is porch-like in keeping with the house. But do we need to say something in here that says it will be in keeping with that design? Because if it were to be changed uh, to different material or, or something that looked like a backyard deck or something like that, it, it might not. The material is uh, already purchased for what you see already. It's already there at the property. It's not looking to change because we can't return it now. <laughs> well, and I think what Commissioner Evans is saying is that should, should, this, should we consider adding a condition that right. this will be allowed in the same, in the, with the same design as the existing, what's in place. So someone couldn't tear it down, the next owner, and put a, just an open underneath deck with gravel under it that's not as attractive or something. So. It won't change what you plan to do at all, but it does give some conditions um, if somebody else in the future at a later date. wants to do something that wouldn't be as appropriate. Right. I guess that's a question for staff is if someone were to replace in kind, if this is approved, replacing this, the footprint in kind with a different design, would they need to return for approval or would we need a condition like that? To they, they would not need to return. Um, the variation runs with the land so if you want to add that condition I would recommend doing it at this time um, I do think it's an appropriate condition as standard number three um, addresses the character of the area its condition would fall within that standard okay. any other thoughts on that as we discuss okay. any other comments or questions from the Commission at this time, is there anyone in City Hall that's attending that would like to make a comment for or against or about the application? Is there anyone online tonight? No one online. Okay. Do we want to continue the public hearing or does anyone want to make a motion? Commission, I move that we close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Christian, would you take the roll? Evans. Evans, aye. Holloman. Holloman, aye. Mattiskill. Mattiskill, aye. Slifka. Slifka, aye. Mead. Mead, aye. Okay. Now we've ended our discussion portion. Is there anything that we need to discuss, such as whether or not we add the condition or not? Yeah, I, I, I think the condition makes sense. Um, you know, I would be in support of adding that, yes. How specific does the condition need to be, like, as far as just talking about materials, or I guess I'm... I think we're charged with crafting that and right now and deciding what it can be a simple sentence. Okay. I, I can't... Someone wants yeah. to take a stab at it. I don't know. I mean, I, from the, the, the picture of the old porch, it's hard for me to tell what that... Is it just wood? I, I couldn't really tell what that material is. Uh, there was a... The current porch is wood with a railing. This. Well, there's, it's composite. 
Well, it so looks it's like framed wood. wood, and yet it is covered in composite. So like a Trex decking. Correct. And then is the is the railing a composite railing as well? It is aluminum. Aluminum. Okay. Hmm. It's just vertical. Aluminum. Slab. It's sleeved with vinyl, and then it has aluminum balusters. Okay. The thing that I think is important about the style is that no matter what material it's made out of, and I looked at it from the street and wasn't able to tell that it was not wood, was that the style of, and I don't know what you call them, the spindles or the upright? Ballisters. Ballisters, okay. That they were in a traditional style. Yeah. That, and I think that's what we're looking for in a neighborhood of older homes rather than, um, well, I guess it's more what we're not looking for. <laughs> I don't. This is difficult. Would it, would it, could it be something to the effect that um, the deck addition in any replacement deck would be consistent in materials to those used and proposed um, when the owners in 2022 sought the variation? And we could then parenthesize and say composite decking, aluminum, uh, you know, traditional railing with vertical spindles and, and, and in a screening. It's a one by four screening, I think it is. Um, I am less concerned with the material than I am with the style. Right. I, mean, and, I think they I, can make it, I don't think it has to be aluminum and composite right. and all that. It can just be wood or you know whatever they would want. It's the style of them that's more important than the material, I think. That area is has, I mean, I feel like it's changed a lot, and it has a lot of new, um, new construction. So, to say the style, I feel like is kind of yeah. I mean, if you drive around there, there's I feel like there's a lot there are a lot of changes, a lot of new construction, like sort of towards um, the Saint you know north, I guess towards right. Saint Charles. So, um, I mean, there's no. I guess this is a, a question for the city. There's no um, current requirement of like it has to be wood or it has to be right. like in the historic district. There's no. So I don't know how, how we could sort of rein that in. If I, if I in. may. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Most times in cases like this, I've kind of been around a little bit, um, would be to not alter the location and dimensions than existing and still has to meet current building codes if replaced because the, the main issue here has been its location how far can we go it, it showed it was existing materials can always look great and they're going to change they're always going to change if this ever gets replaced because of what it's being built with now it's meant to be sustained for a long period of time Right. right. It would only be changed based upon if it was destroyed, you know, or preference of color. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Materials are going to change. I don't right. think we ought to even talk about materials. Could we say something like, I mean, my concern is I want it to look like a front porch. I don't want it to look like a backyard deck. Right. Can we say something that it should be in a style consistent with front porches? Would that be helpful? If I may, Mr. Chairman. Um, so the objective is to have the extension match the existing stoop. And I think the condition could be almost as simple as that to say the variation is granted with the condition that the extended portion matches um, the design and character of the existing stoop railings. So then if somebody came in 10 years from now, different owners, and wanted to take the whole thing down and replace it with something else, they'd, they'd have, have to, to go back to that design. style. They would, they would have to match that. That design, might work. That character. That would work. And, it could, and we could say materially match. I mean, you might not be able to get the same spindling. I mean, it's gonna not, it might not be identical, but it's going to be. Right. I think, be. I mean, again, the condition, uh, I'm sorry, the standard for the variation talks about the character of the area. Right. So. If we're looking to, to maintain this character, I think the condition can be that simple and that gives us flexibility in the future right. on materials and spindling. And, and back to Rebecca's point, should somebody 15 years from now decide to put something in that is much more modern, and they can always come back. And then the commission at the time will look at the current character of the area and what else has been developed and they might 
the cost, you know, cost an application fee, but they still have. So, so let me ask another question. If, if they weren't coming for the variation, though, we wouldn't be able to regulate in any way what kind of no. porch was being done. So I, I guess I keep going back to that. Like, it's a good point. It's not a real yeah. standard that's already in place unless. Oh, sorry. Uh, there's not a real standard in place unless they were coming for the variation and the setback or you know so so I guess I feel like if it was my house <laughs> you know if I'm within all the regulations and in that area of town there's not um, there aren't rules around that so I guess I I mean that's fair I don't want to yeah. be like you know a fly in the ointment but um, I just feel like if they're within their space and um, then they should be able to <laughs> build it out they want. Well, that's a good point because <laughs> they're ending up being regulated more than anyone else. Right, because they because yeah. of the variation. That's a good point. So, I don't know. I That's fair. And I yeah. think just real quick just to remember they're they're asking for a deck technically not a porch. So that may be you know, if someone comes or in right. there and they want to put in a deck, it could be a different style right. or character yeah. than this. So. But, I mean, it's kind of the definition that we're looking at. Yeah, the variation is to allow a deck in this in this space, and there are there are different levels of deck and decking material. So uh, if that's the concern of disrupting the character of the street yard by allowing a deck in the street yard, and you want to hold that deck to a certain character, I think that's a fair condition. And we can't call it a porch because it doesn't have a roof. It doesn't have a cover. Right. The, the zoning ordinance definition of a porch requires a roof or roof-like structure. So could the variance be to allow a porch without a roof and call it a porch? The variations that are specified in the code, uh, the, there's like nine or ten of them. There's one that allows for the use of a yard otherwise prohibited. So in this case, the deck is prohibited. That's the variation they're requesting us to allow the use that is prohibited. We can't vary the definitions established in the, in the code. A technicality, I know. Because <laughs> you're right, it's the word deck that's, that's kind of at odds here. Right. From my perspective, I, I would shy away from putting the extra qualifier on it, but I don't know how you guys yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I think, sure, you know, sure. given given that it is a request for a variation, I, I think it's reasonable to, uh, and and the variation is, is specific, it's shown how it's going to be, you know, it's possible if this looked very different, it may not be considered today. So, you know, to me, I think it's, I think it's reasonable to, to, to tie what is being asked for today to the appearance of the, of the porch or deck going forward. So they have the burden of the extra regulation going forward because they got the variance. Yeah. And the variance is for a product that's not allowed in this type right. of yard. Right. Which would be a reason to say it's okay if somebody has a porch and they want to change the design of that porch in any way that they like because they have a porch, which is allowed, but a deck right. is not. I think I'm back to going with the condition, but I do see your point. <laughs> I think it's a good point. I just feel like, I mean, maybe if it was, was a broad condition, you know, not so specific to say it's tied to the uh, to the reg to the initial porch or whatever, but just to say consistent with, I would I would be okay with that consistent with the surrounding or neighborhood or. It's it's not it's going to have a just this the rail and skirting correct, okay. Um. If we said something more general, like uh, on the condition that it is in keeping with the character of the house, 
because it's really the house more than the neighborhood, because you're right, the neighborhood could change. They could knock down every house on the street and build all modern houses, and then, mm -hmm. well, then the whole thing would look weird. But it's really in keeping with the, the style of the house. Could we just say that? that the, but it is still a deck. How, how does the style of a deck tie into the style of a house? I just, no, it's just, just a more just traditional. A flat what they surface. have planned is, is what? very traditional looking. Right. And the house is traditional house. trying to think of something as simple as possible yeah I agree if you referenced um, I mean do you get into things like just do you say a, a deck with one by four skirting or just skirting and a invert and vertical linear railing I mean you're not going to have but that would all be in the code right or the Railing well, the code probably allows a lot of different railing types for, if it even regulates it at all. It probably regulates it the regulates height. height, spacing, but not materials or safety. character. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, if we're if we want if we're shying away from materials, and the materials to me would be something that is indicative of the the style, right? So. If we're not going to be specific about which materials could or could not be used, um, then how? Then, then what? What would we say about the style, other than consistent with the home? You know, I don't know that referencing any of our homes to, to put a deck on your home that's consistent with your home. I don't know that that means right. anything to me. I'm just, I coming back to a deck is a flat surface. Can't regulate the railing. It's going to be regulated by code. What if we just said something to the effect of that there'll be a, a deck, a deck with skirting will be allowed in this place? Because you, you're, what you don't want is an open deck with weeds and gravel growing up underneath it. You want you want something that's more finished, and I think that's the intention here. But if you just had that simply, that maintains at least some finished look right. to a deck ver versus having an open mm -hmm. backyard deck on the front of a home. Uh, is this, it helps. Would that be sufficient? So, so can we just say rather than consistent with the neighborhood or, or, you know, some, or the house, which are some maybe subjective determinations, consist, consistent with the style and the design that's that's being um, requested here, you know, today. You're saying stop short of calling out skirting or screening, but just say consistent with what's being proposed today and the current characteristics of the of the current stoop and railing system, right? So that way we we're, we're sure that in the future the stoop and stair system are going to match that deck if anybody rips it apart it's all going to be matching versus somebody putting in a set of steps and then this doesn't match and you know what i mean where there's a little bit of a hodgepodge right maybe kind of combining yeah, well those we're, two we're kind of getting over yeah. that line again of <laughs> that, designing it for them. that's yeah i mean that's someone's home and and they i find myself thinking <laughs> these folks are going to be using the home in the first three years, they may may decide we really don't like this railing. We want to change it, and they'll probably they may be a lot, they may go out and pick a different style railing. But if as long as it's clean lines, I mean, should, should we be putting a condition on them that doesn't allow for right. them to that wouldn't to otherwise be on another? What they've picked looks good on paper, and hopefully they like it. But it may not be. They may want something different. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are decks with. Whether it's plexiglass or just so you can, it's more open. And I think I mean we don't allow decks in the street yard for some of these reasons. Um, so I I guess I don't, I don't share the opinion that it's an unreasonable condition to ask that it maintains a certain style or character. I mean it's not prohibited in the yard for a reason. So for allowing that use, I don't think it's a, a reach to require a certain level of improvement to to grant the variation. Um, if we don't want to get specific with, 
you know, spindle sizes and um, materials, we don't have to, but I think they've presented an application, uh, request for a variation based on photos and plans. And it's, it's reasonable to, to hold them to that if you're going to grant the variation. So, so you're saying back to Adam's point is make it, uh, they would do a deck consistent with the construction of the existing front porch. And then, so if somebody wanted to change it later, they could come in, maybe talk to city staff and they want to change the railing slightly. You might say that's fine. That's consistent. You don't have to come or, back. That's or if we feel it's not, we can say you can bring it back to the commission and ask for it to, the condition to be dropped or modified. I mean, we all, I think we're, we all think that what's on the existing porch looks okay today, right? I think it's okay to put the condition on because they are asking to put a deck in a front yard. I think that distinguishes it from all the other porches on the street that this is officially a deck and not a porch. Could we craft some simple language so that we can have something that we can all embrace? Does anybody have? A desire to throw down a sentence. So the motion. Well, John, excuse you know, to, to try to be to be fairly simple that I and you know, maybe just something is that, you know, any, any construction would have to be materially consistent with um, what was pro a, a, a proposed and approved in, in the plan. Um, and by materially, I don't necessarily mean the material itself. No, you mean material. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. In, in, in terms of, of, of its appearance yeah. and its, its design and size. And right. That might be sufficient. Scope and nature, maybe? Mm. I think no. it's materially consistent materially with what, with the existing portion of what was proposed for the deck addition. It's okay. That allows some change in railing. That allows change in skirting, as long as it's consistent. Materials are going to just going to be a material we don't even know exists today, being used 20 years from now. So. It doesn't let them completely change the style, which. I mean, there could be some style that looks great that isn't like this. So I hate to limit that, but I don't see another way to do it. And not also allow them to put up something that would look totally inappropriate. Does someone want to take a stab at a motion? Or are we still debating whether or not to include it? I think that Rebecca is the one who feels the strongest about not including it. If we include it, what happens if we include a condition and one person doesn't, or some people, could be more than one, don't like that condition? They it, vote nay, then it, the whole thing goes? No. Well, so it, it's, it would be. Then they could, could repropose it. Three to it? two, or four, you know, whatever, and then they, then that recommendation goes to city council. There's, right, but and there's a couple of ways to do it. You can you can make a motion now, to add a condition of whatever language you decide on, put that motion to add the condition to a vote, and if that motion passes, then the condition is now part of the main motion, um, which would be to approve the variation, recommend approval of the variation. Um, if it fails, then you're back to the drawing board of it. Do we include any motion or no motion? Or you can take a stab at one singular motion um, recommending approval with a condition. There's a couple different ways right. of doing it. And if, if it does not have to be a unanimous vote, it's a recommendation to the council. Right, right. So if it, the majority passes. And, and this, what we're talking about, only applies to the first motion, a variation to allow a deck. This doesn't apply to the variation for the setback. Right. There should be so two, separate, mo two, two separate, separate variations, motions you're recommending. How do we want to proceed? Might I suggest, Michael, do you want to 
craft a motion to include the condition that you articulated three minutes ago? And then we can vote on that. <clears throat> so the entire motion or just a qualification? I, I think it, the motion would be motion. something like, I'd like to make a motion to include a condition in the deck variation, uh, which states that blank, whatever you're going to say. Okay, so a motion, uh, something to the effect that the uh, the variation to allow the deck in a street yard is would be contingent upon the construction and or appearance of the deck uh, remaining consistent, materially consistent with the the application. Is that uh, is that reasonable? I'm, I'm just writing. I'm going to repeat it. Just construction appearance of the deck. Um, to, so, so to remain consistent with the plans submitted in the application. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to articulate what I just heard you say. So you would make a motion to add a condition to the deck variation motion which would require that the construction and appearance of the deck is to remain consistent with the plan submitted in the application. Yeah, I, that's, I think that's fair. Would you like to make that motion? Can I have what you wrote down? <laughs> you want, sure. <laughs> if you can read my handwriting. On the back, I think. Okay, I'd like to make a motion regarding the uh, request for variation um, to allow a deck in a street yard uh, that the construction and appearance of the deck must remain consistent with the plans and specifications included in the application. Is there a second? Mattiskill second. Okay. Kristen, would you take roll vote yes Evans Evans aye Holloman Holloman nay Metaskill Metaskill aye Slifka Slifka aye Mead Mead aye the motion passes so now we're on to the motion for, well, there'll be two separate motions. The first one will be for the deck variant. The second one will then be for the, um, the setback variation. So you're ready for that one? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the variance from section 11-5E-4 to permit a street yard setback of 17 feet instead of the required 20 feet for the proposed deck. Second, Slifka. Okay, Kristen, will you take the, the vote? Yes. Evans? Evans, aye. Holloman? Holloman, aye. Metaskill? Metaskill, aye. Slifka? Slifka, aye. Mead? Mead, aye. Do you want to do that one, or do you want the man with the condition in his hand to do it? Oh, I thought we already approved that one. Okay. No, we were approved adding the, approved adding the, the condition. condition to the motion. For oh, Michael, go ahead. He's got it there in front of him. Okay, all uh, right, uh, to move a uh, request for a variation from section 11-3-3 of the Geneva Zoning Ordinance to allow a deck in a street yard on the following conditions, that the construction appearance of the deck must remain consistent with the plans and specifications in the application. Mattiskill second. Kristen? Evans? 
Evans, aye. Holloman? Holloman, nay. Mattiskill? Mattiskill, aye. Slifka? Slifka, aye. Mead? Mead, aye. Okay, that passes and we'll move forth to City Council. Be May 1st uh, will be the City Council meeting and that'll be at seven o'clock uh, Monday night in this room. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you bet. That concludes the public hearing portion of tonight's meeting and we move on to the site plan review. It's item six on the agenda. 6A, General Mills expansion request for site plan review for a proposed 65,600 square foot addition to the production facility and a 48,600 square foot addition to the warehouse located at 2089 Pillsbury Drive. The applicant is General Mills Incorp uh, Inc. Um, do we have anything to read into the record or do we not do that for a site plan? I'll do that okay. for a site plan. Then I guess we'll hear from the applicant. Need to pull anything up there? Oh, yeah. What's your password, Matt? <laughs> yeah, we can type it in. <laughs> Geneva, it's a password. <laughs> One, two, three, Geneva. What is this for? That's not Geneva. Kensington. It's gone. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Name the product. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I'd like to say thank you to the commission for taking the time to add us to your agenda this evening. We appreciate it very much. Uh, my name is Thomas Matzik, and I am a civil structural architectural engineer for General Mills. And I'm Allison Owen with Shive Hattery, and I'm a project manager for our company supporting General Mills in this project. All right, so we prepared a few uh, uh, slides to outline our overall uh, site plan to uh, present to you. So I guess. So uh, some key messages we wanted to convey. Um, so we're excited to bring new products and investment to uh, our Geneva site at 2089 Pillsbury. The specific products we're looking at including within this uh, expansion are Gushers, Fruit Snacks, and Fruit by the Foot. The current product lines, including Betty Crocker cake and muffin mixes, will be maintained in the existing facility. Uh, and Project Panther, expansion renews progress towards fulfilling the original site master plan and continuing commitments in Geneva. All right, so just a little bit of the history. You're probably somewhat familiar, but we thought we'd just do a quick review. So the site actually began to be developed in 1998. Um, there was a master plan at that time to build it out to 500,000 square feet and fully develop the property, including multiple phases of storm water mitigation efforts and basins. Um, around that 1998 time, the phase one was completed, and shortly after, within the next couple of years, the phase two, three, uh, basically it built it out to what, pretty much with what is there today. Um, and the footprint today is about 20, or 273,000 square feet. Panther uh, is proposing to add 114,000 square feet to bring it to 387,000 of the original 500,000 square foot facility. And then a couple highlights, I know that a few were shared, but just to recap, we have that production and packaging expansion. Um, there's a warehouse component to this that's going to be added on to the adjacent warehouse, uh, increasing some of the parking capacity that's needed to accommodate the new employees. Uh, we needed to update the site circulation, which we'll look at in the, the plan to accommodate this new expansion because where this expansion is going will um, essentially cut off some of the, the internal um, movements of our, of our trucks. Uh, and then, you know, the goal is really to expand the security perimeter to the extent that was planned for the overall master to help General Mills facilitate, you know, future, potential future work, as well as, you know, just make sure that we've established our boundary and the, the team is excited to do that. Um, 
as part of this, there's some obvious utility relocation modifications that are needed. Landscaping updates, um, you'll see a, a lot of those, including uh, the parkway and screening trees that have been brought to us um, by this, this, through this process, we've worked through that. And then, you know, just some general site lighting to meeting with the, the city zoning requirements. And then the overall just materials of construction. So the existing facility is all precast concrete, you know, wall panels and roof structure. Um, and the new expansion will be the same construction type. This is a site plan. Um, a couple things to highlight. I don't know if the pointer will work. I guess not. I'll just visually try and, or sorry. Oh, that would be great if oh. you don't mind. So I don't have to try and describe it. Oh, there we go. I didn't see him take it. I have to blind it. Okay. Um, so the existing facility, I'm just going to try and outline it, is this footprint here. So there's, uh, this is the existing warehouse and existing docks. The new Panther project is bringing in a new warehouse directly adjacent to the existing, and then the production building is going to be on the south side. Um, other changes, the, the circulation, so the security fence I was referring to, right now it runs about where the new building is and, and kind of comes up this way. So that's the secure perimeter. The new secure perimeter will continue down and then cross the road here and then encompass the rest of the site. Um, the drop trailers, so you'll, you'll probably see, it, or we can show if needed, but there's existing drop trailer parking along this road that will be displaced by our new expansion. So we're creating a new lot for that, which is shown here. And then that proposed parking expansion for employees is up here. Um, the employees today enter the facility in this location right here. That's where all the um, security, welfare areas are. So that's going to be maintained. And then, you know, trucks enter today here. And instead of today, they'll enter here. So very similar overall traffic, both for our um, employees and for drivers coming in to, to load and unload. Um, a couple other highlights we mentioned, you know, there's quite a bit of landscaping scope associated with this project, including fulfilling the parkway tree requirements. So um, you'll notice those showing up here, as well as creating a buffer zone in this area. Um, additional plantings will be taking place kind of along the perimeter of that road inside the secure fence line. Again, the idea is that we're um, leaving this open for general malls in the future. Um, I guess, I'm not sure if there's, I think we can probably go to the next slide. This is just a site perspective. Um, so again, this is the, that large retention area that's existing. Um, there's a dry uh, detention area up in this zone here. Um, and then, as we mentioned, this is the, the new truck entry area. And then the, they will be directed either to go um, to one side of the facility or the other from that location. All of these drives and entrances to Couts and Avril are maintained. We're not disrupting those at all. Those are all still staying as is. Um, and really, outside of the south side, there really isn't much happening in this northwest corner, so almost all the expansion is limited to this area. Just a different view. All the uh, 3D trees you're seeing there are the new trees, so that's what's included in this project to give you a perspective on the size of the landscaping. And another view from Avril. I think that's the end of the overview. Okay. Any, any comments or questions from the commission? Ma'am? It looks like there's going to be a fence going across the bike path. No. How? No. Okay. Let me. 
me, I'm wondering. So, yeah, so maybe I'll try and point it out. So, so the bike path is down here. Yeah. The fence will be up on our property line above this red, so it'll be up here. And that lower red line, what's that? This is actually General Mills property as well. I mean, the one in between the lowest and the highest. Sorry, the red line is not fence, so oh, that may not. be confusing. Those okay. are, the, right. those are our property right. lines. Yes. I'm sorry, I should have clarified. Yes, right. those I are. I get it. Okay, I thought they were fence. <laughs> no. Thank you. Yep. I, I just had a question. So both of the detention basins are, are for your facility only, is that right? I, uh, I think that's not totally the case. There is some off-site areas that go to these. Yeah, a little bit of the area to the northwest, so which is to the upper left there, drains through our site and into that pond. Yes, yeah, so this detention has an easement to the city of Geneva. Thanks. The de detention and retention ponds were sized for the original, for the proposed maximum. Right, right for the original proposed 500,000 500, square foot build out. And, and 98, you said, right? So 98. Yes. So, so there's a drainage. 15 years, as, as, it, as the requirements changed in 15 years. And that's something that we've actually been working through with Public Works and, and WBK, just understanding some of that and ensuring, you know, that just that spillways, normal water elevations, right. and those types of things are maintained and appropriate um, given conditions today. Number of employees, when you've added this, how much will that change? You'll have warehouse employees and production employees probably on shifts as well, right? Right. Um, right now, the current estimates are about 103. I believe. Additional? Wait. Sorry, yeah. that was <laughs> correct. She's correct. 160 across four shifts. Yes. Okay. Um, so I think 142 or something wage employees. Four, four shifts? Four shifts, yes. So the existing facility operates off of three shifts. The new facility will offer, operate off of four shifts. So does that mean... Six, I'm, I, I, six we can't see. We don't. Yeah. Have so yeah, we're yeah. We don't. Uh, we don't manage the production <laughs> aspect of the facility. Uh, yeah, we're just in charge of the. I think they overall have some buildings like overlapping. Yes, yeah, I believe they. I believe there would be, be overlap be in a lot a number of the shifts, but um, there's no work from home here, right? <laughs> correct. Yeah. These 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 folks will be on site. Yes. <laughs> There are a couple things mentioned in this in the staff report um, when they were suggesting conditions, and I was just curious if what, on the staff. This is like maybe a question for staff. The first condition of final engineering does that include things that are still open like stormwater, traffic plan acceptance? So that that's a catch-all for that stuff. It's pretty much a standard condition we have on yeah. any, any site plan review. We um, re require preliminary engineering approval before we get to the Planning and Zoning Commission and City Council stage. Then once those once the property is entitled, we go through a final engineering review process. Um, but our team has, has approved it on a, the preliminary engineering, uh, confirming that the stormwater work, utility locations, access drives, which aren't changing. Um, is all in good order. Okay. I didn't have any problem with the recommendations or the conditions. I just was curious if, if it was catching everything that was shown to be open. There's a, I think a lighting photometric plan has not been submitted yet, but it's coming and that type of thing. Or maybe no, it's... That was. Okay. Um, and so we're within the 0.5 foot candles uh, okay. property line. So. I think we just had some comments on landscaping that needed to be resolved right. and may have. We, yeah. we received yeah, we a resubmittal today. Yes, yep. So and that and this it reflects those yeah comments. so we we received some revised plans today um, I was able to look at some of the landscaping stuff and they resolved all of our landscaping issues right. um, public works and WBK have not been able to review the stormwater or okay. know their comments yet but they should be able to get to it before the City Council and there's no wetland mitigation that needs to be done I, so I, I noticed that your report said there were no wet to your knowledge no existing wetlands but the staff's report shows just under 10. Well, I think we changed. So there was actually a wetland um, determination okay. performed. And so 
there is no impact in our addition, but there are wetlands on site. Okay. So that's that's kind of the clarifying um, piece. So you're not there. disturbing those, so there's no need for off-site mitigation or anything else. Correct. Okay. Yes, but there are some on site. So to be clear. Okay. I have a question. Um, sure. You said the materials of the new construction are consistent with the one that's existing. Are there any updates as far as like making the building more eco-friendly or any things like that? <laughs> so it does meet, it is required to meet the current energy code, you know, what the adopted energy codes are. So there will be, I guess technically, you know, there's a higher insulation values, um, the mechanical systems, electrical systems need to be more efficient for this facility. So the traditional comm checks that are required by your building Department, all that is being submitted. So I would say, from that perspective, we're meeting it. I, there's no. There's um, nothing over and above. No, like nothing over and above. A green initiative. You're not a, a, try, trying to be a Leeds building, or correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. Anything else? It's exciting for you guys. It is. It, yeah, it's a large project. Yeah, this is uh, actually the largest. Uh, capital improvement project General, General Mills has done to date so mm -hmm. is it really yeah by pure dollar amount okay okay but yes so they're very eager so thank you what is the time frame we are looking to get going <laughs> as soon as possible okay. how long would it take to so we're looking to have this operation this operation <laughs> running and, 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 and production starting in uh late summer of 24. Okay, anything else we need? <coughs> Thank you, I think. Appreciate you bringing it forward. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, that concludes uh, the site plan review item six on the agenda. We now enter the public comment period of the meeting. If there's anyone here that or on we haven't we haven't taken a vote do we oh, oh yeah sorry sorry yeah. this is not site plan <laughs> review this is site plan approval okay. right sorry does anyone like to make a motion to uh for the pro related to the site plan review yeah. mr chairman i move to approve the uh site plan request for an additional 65,600 square feet addition to the production facility and a 48,600 square foot addition to the warehouse uh, subject to the remaining outstanding conditions included in the report. Second. Kristen. Evans. Evans, aye. Holloman. Holloman, aye. Metaskill. Metaskill, aye. Slifka. Slifka, aye. Mead. Mead, aye. Now we're done. Thank you. So that that recommendation goes to the city council on May first as well, and that's a seven o'clock meeting in this room. All right, that now concludes the site plan review. Item six on the agenda, we move to item seven, which is the public public comment section of the meeting. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to make a, a comment from the podium, we can do that at this time. Is there somewhere online? Yeah. And once we do the folks in this room, we'll move to some comments that might come from the line. Good evening. David Walensiak, 578 Lexington Drive in Geneva. Um, several of the other residents in my subdivision came to me, and I, I don't know if you guys are aware of it or not, but uh, one of the neighbors was telling me, did they open up a new runway uh, along Geneva Drive that comes off Couts Road? And I thought he's exaggerating. But I don't know if you guys have looked at that at all, but did they put in new lighting or something? Are you talking about at DuPage Airport? No. On Geneva Drive, the spur that comes from Couts Road, you know, in front of Lineage and yeah. with the new project. Wow. I mean, I'm surprised we don't have little Cessnas landing there. Uh, 
But yeah, no, it's just incredible. Do they, you know, if they put new lighting, because I had something like that happen at where I used to work in Schaumburg, they forgot to put the side shields on. That's down below Kirk Road. And man, the light, I mean, you just see it. Really? The poor people that are living right along Kirk Road, I mean, huh. you know, because uh, again, if they continue, if it's new lighting or something, uh, I, I think someone needs to kind of look at that. Um, are those are the street lights, yeah. Is, is that just south of where the new development's going on? That yeah. is correct, yeah, between lineage and the new development. Right, right. so was any of that changed out? Uh, the street lighting, I, I wasn't aware of anything, but I could check with our public works department. Yeah, just, yeah. if something's changed. Okay. Because as you're going east on Geneva Drive out of the, you know, fields of Geneva yeah. East, yeah. about a block and a half before you get to Kirk Road, I mean, you just see that. Huh. It's something. Again, I thought they were exaggerating, but they, they aren't. Right. Okay. I, I have seen these lights. I actually thought that they might have been like staging lights for the construction crews, maybe if they had started earlier before sunrise, because they don't look like street lights. They look like they're t a lot taller. They're taller, yeah. Right? Yeah, I, I saw I the same drive, thing. I didn't drive down there. so Yeah, maybe, I saw the same thing, and something. I thought, boy, they were really bright, and I figured they have to be some sort of construction staging lights because those cannot be street But lights. it seems like it's on both sides all the way Yeah, along. I don't know if it's involved with the development, but I did I did notice that same yeah. thing. Now, yeah. I'm, now I want to drive out there after this. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I'm hoping it is just staging and that, you know, we didn't yeah. buy some yeah. new lights or something that right. didn't come with the side shields or something. Well, it, it's kind of funny because we're putting all the requirements on these new developers uh, not to have light pollution, and it's like, wow. <laughs> Uh, and the other question that I have is regarding, is there any updates regarding the Bullock project? So that's still under review. Okay. Um, moving forward? Moving forward, yeah. They, they have to, um, I believe they have to do another submittal for staff review as of, okay. as of right now. But everything looks like it's positively moving yeah, forward? Yeah, they're working through their review with uh, the Kane County Department of Transportation and their access off of Kirk Road, and they're working with our electric division on some issues getting power to the site, uh, but it's moving forward. Okay. And then the last item is, is there any documentation out there? You know, we, we've got a lot of stuff going in on that southeast corridor. Sure. Is there anything that's showing, I mean, I know you guys are already looking at electric, getting water out there, so you've got to have some idea of the size, you know, I do see the sizes of the place, and if I go and delve into each one and, you know, make, is there a master plan or map of everything that might show the amount of cars and trucks that we may be adding in the future, just to give us some scope uh, of the activity that's going on because again yeah we look at everything individually but I think we need to step back and look at the whole, you know what are we doing uh, so, we, the yeah. city does have a southeast area master plan that outlines a general roadway network outlines where the existing wetlands are and that need to be protected right. uh, but we don't something that would you know these proposed projects that are going on and what kind of impact yeah, we don't have a master plan that shows like projected traffic volumes as a whole because those are really kind of determined on a case-by-case -case basis as projects Which, come yeah, in. Yeah, is kind of getting nerve-wracking to a lot of people because they're saying, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's only, you know, a thousand trucks here, a thousand, but when you take the whole thing as a total, uh, and, and once it all comes into place, it's too late. So, again. You know, if you do have anything, it would be nice to, to put that out. And All right. Thank you. Any thank questions you. of me? Okay. No, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that. Is there anyone else who would like to speak this, this evening? Matt, do we have someone online? There is someone online. Um, I don't see... With a raised hand? We do not have a raised hand. Do we want to? We want to ask them typically. Okay. All right. And I, I guess if, if you're online and you'd like to speak, please use the raise your hand feature and unmute your mic. No. No. Okay. 
we have no other comments at this time. So we'll move on to other business. Um, nothing, nothing major to report. Um, I don't believe we have anything scheduled for the next, uh, the next PCC meeting on the April 27th date. Um, so look, look for more info on that. Um, we do have several projects that are getting to the stage of, you know, coming before you guys. Okay. Um, so we should have, you know, some full meetings coming up, but nothing as of, as of yet. Okay. Just want to add that uh, major change since we last met is that Chayton's no longer with us. Um, he was he's not no longer with us. He's just well, yeah, right. He's, no he's with Cook he's County. He's, got a, he's yeah. in no longer he's with in a the city part. of Geneva. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, I uh, I think uh, I really enjoyed working with Chayton. Um, I know Matt did as well. Yes. Yep. He really enjoyed working with all of you, and he was rather upset that he wasn't able to see you in person and say goodbye before he left. But. Uh, He's, he's shortened his commute by about 40 miles. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Gotten rid of his car and is doing well working for the county. Okay, so good, good. Wish him well. His, his position, I mean, now you're, you're back to two people instead of three. What would be a yeah, we're third? currently interviewing, Matt, Matt, Matt's been promoted to the city planner position, and we're currently interviewing uh, the assistant planner position. We have another interview lined up tomorrow, so we're hoping to make a decision shortly. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Again, Thank you, guys. Yeah, <laughs> Matt is with us. <laughs> Alive and well. Yes. So, I did have one question for you guys. I touched on it with Matt beforehand, but now that nationwide and in the state, COVID has been taken off the list, are we going to continue on with the virtual components of the meetings and that flexibility, or is there a plan to go one way or another with that? Um, I haven't heard otherwise. I think the I think it provides another way for the public and residents yeah. to access our meetings, and um, we've been planning to continue the practice. And it's it's allowed per current state code and all that. It just yeah. doesn't have to be during a pandemic or something. Right. Okay. I think I don't want to misspeak. <laughs> so okay. I think the Open Meetings Act and everything still requires you to. Is, is back to normal where you have to meet one of the three exceptions to not as a commissioner to participate virtually right, right. okay yeah. i was just curious reading reading through the conditions anything else dunkin donuts is open so it's open <laughs> it's open can't ask about it anymore. okay move to adjourn Thank you all.